Hello, guys. So welcome back to the second session, of which here uh, we're going to finish talking about um, the myocardium function. And then we'll go to another, another what's this case scenario. Thank you. All right, so ischemic heart disease. Ischemic heart disease is also called uh, coronary artery disease. Okay, so we, we discussed the following angina, which is chest pain, chronic uh, ischemic heart disease, of which we will know it very soon, myocardial infarction, and then sudden cardiac, uh, sudden cardiac death, or this, in short, this is the progression of what happens. Number one, there's angina, which is chest pain, which is what well, that, that signifies or leads to us is chronic ischemic heart disease, which can lead to myocardial infarction. And after, after myocardial infarction, just sudden cardiac death. What are the causes of uh, ischemic heart disease? You can remember the news in the mnemonics that have been put there. A, A, C, C, and hypotension. In short, these are more like risk factors, but rather, they are more like risk factors, but you need to know that these are also considered as, as causes of uh, the ischemic heart disease. For the risk factors, see, really same as the risk factors that we discussed under under uh, under what's this atherosclerosis, but uh, for this one, you have uh, the risk factors that um you also have the risk factors that are modified and ones that are not mo non modifiable risk factors. The same way we mentioned them that side. So for modifiable, remember that these are the things that you can control and that's uh, classified into two. You have called major and minor, of which major four H's. You have a uh, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. You have a uh, heavy smoking, and then you also have um. Uh, what's this? You also have uh, hypercholesteremia, yes, hypercholesteremia, if smoking, hypertension, and okay, yeah, so that was um, about the risk factors for what's this? For... Yeah. So, the, those were the risk factors. The major ones we said they have hypertension, hyperglycemia. Also, in brackets, you can say diabetes mellitus. Just say diabetes mellitus, so that you remember. But remember, we're using the four H's, so that you can remember that there are four H's of which, under hyperglycemia, the main thing that you need to put in your head is diabetes mellitus. The other one is heavy smoking. Those were heavy smoking damages the blood vessels directly. That's what we said. It damages, it damages the endothelium. Heavy smoking damages the endothelium. And we, talk, we talked about the minor ones, which are sugar intake. Steroid intake, stress, and sedentary lifestyle. Those people that do not exercise and the likes. And then under the non modifiable risk factors, we said, we said these are the things that you cannot control, such as age, sex, and family history of uh, atherosclerosis. Those were the risk factors. These are the same risk factors for the skin disease, but these are the more like the causes of that. So you've got one, which is um, aortic calcific uh, stenosis, in which the, the, the aorta, aorta is calcified and is stenosed meaning that the damage of the aorta is reduced and that can lead to a reduced blood supply to the myocardium. Aortic aneurysm, of which I've already explained what aneurysm is, I mentioned that aneurysms are the, the bulging or rather the abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel. And this occurs due to the weakness of the tunica media. So remember aneurysm is the tunica media, while atherosclerosis is the tunica intima. So the tunica media becomes very weak, like what we mentioned previously, and that leads to the abnormal dilatation of the blood vessel in aortic aneurysm. Aortic valve stenosis, just imagine if the aorta, the aortic valve, the aortic dead seminal valve is stenosed, it becomes hardened, or there's co coagulation of the aorta. Coagulation of the aorta is still the same thing, but this one is, can, can be con most, it's, it's congenital actually. And there's a, there's a reduced diameter of the aorta, and I don't know how to explain it uh, online or using whatever. I can explain it properly when I'm with you guys physically, just not this. Aortic valve stenosis causes other causes CC coronary atherosclerosis. Mainly, the coronary atherosclerosis is the major cause of which we've already talked about atherosclerosis. So, the pathophysiology is just the same. For coronary thrombosis embolism, maybe there's something, there's an emboli that has the, or there's the, that, that there's the formation of the thrombus and that code tries to what to dislodge and affects the coronary arteries. Or we have coronary spasms or valve disease or any vasculitis. That is polyarthritis nodosa. Hypotension. If there is hypotension, it means that there will be reduced blood supply. Remember, the, the, if there is hypotension, it means that the blood is there's reduced uh, BP, and mainly it occurs due to shock. For example, you have lost blood and the, the, the heart is not able to pump blood. 
and that blood cannot go to the coronary arteries, and hence you are going to have myocardial infarction, which will lead to ischemia of the heart. Hypoxemia, such as anemia, and the cardiac, uh, I don't know what they mean when they say CO, carbon monoxide, it should be carbon monoxide, yeah. So now that's uh, ischemic disease divided into two. We've got, uh, for those people that were there, we, we discussed the, oasis, the, the disease very well. It, we said that um, you've got um, the, what, what, what is called, um, what do you call that? What do we call that? So it was what is called acute coronary syndrome. And we also have a, uh, the chronic skin guard disease. So in short, for this one, we'll just follow it the way it is. So you have, you have got angina, which is chest pain. Now that chest pain is divided into three. Angina is divided into three. You have got table angina, also called exertional angina, which in which you only feel pain when uh, you want to do something. You apply any effort to something. That is quite, it's called, or oh, in exertion, you want to work, you want to do whatever. That is when you feel pain. It's called excessional or stable angina. In this case, the arthromatous plaque is just it's stable, it does not move. It does not go anywhere, it remains there. That is in stable angina. And it mainly occurs when the when the lumen of the blood vessel is uh occluded for at least 70, 70% of the lumen is that uh is obstructed or rather occluded. And then you have what is called the principal angina, of which this one is caused by vasospasms and this pain also occurs at rest. It doesn't matter whether you are at whatever, it's just like that. And remember this one, it occurs at the same time. For example, if it occurs today at 16 hours tomorrow, it will occur at the same time. Yes, that's what the, the Prince Mental Angina Pectoris is. Or versus Pazimiki Angina Pectoris. There's also another type of angina, which is called unstable angina, or crescendo in brackets. So unstable angina there, the crotty is not stable. So it dislodges, it moves from one area to the other. So there's increased increasing pain intensity caused by a low effort. In fact, this one is called unstable because even at rest, it, the pain pain occurs and it is most uh, caused by an occlusion of the blood vessel at least ninety percent of it. That is what it that is what it is. Those are the three types of angina pectoris. You've got the stable, brings mental and the unstable. So, in chronic chronic ischemic heart disease, what happens is that there's an occlusion to the blood vessel. And hence, that, that chronic ischemic disease can progress to heart failure. Remember, if they, because they, there's an infection, it's chronic. It's been there for a long period of time. What happens is that that can cause the diminished blood supply to the myocardium, myocardium and, it, and it can die. And if it dies off, you are gone. That will lead to heart failure, in short. Morphology, no morphology continues until infection is occur, occurs in angina pectoris. But in chronic ischemic heart disease, you can see gross dilated gray-white Microscope, you can see that, of which I'm not interested in that. So let's discuss myocardial infarction, meaning there's ischemia to the myocardia. So myocardial infarction is coagulative necrosis of my myocardia due to ischemia because there's no blood going to there. The myocardium will die via what is called coagulative necrosis. You know the types of necrosis. But this one is coagulative, meaning there's a coagulation, there's a clot somewhere that is leading to death of the tissue infarction. So now the incidence is most common disease which is induced, is the co most common cause of a disease. What, 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 what do they mean when they say this? The most common cause of disease induced death, meaning the people that, that just dies, they just die without knowing. Men, men it's myocardial infarction. And male are usually aff affected than female. And the age, which is about 45 to 65, somewhere there is highly predisposed. So the risk factors, the same risk factors that we talked about, in atherosclerosis, always remember that. So, so what is the pathophysiology yeah, or the pathogenesis? The causes of ischemic disease, mainly I told you it's atherosclerosis. That is why I couldn't start with uh, anything else apart from atherosclerosis. I then the sites, you've got the left anterior coronary occlusion. You've got left anterior artery, remember. It's the, it's the most common, as common site for uh, ischemic occlusion, which is 40 to 50% of it. Infarction of the anterior wall of left ventricle. So if that one is occluded, the left anterior, remember left, left anterior coronary artery, it supplies the left ventricle. So if it is blocked, it means that that area, the left ventricle will be affected, anterior left ventricle will be affected, and until two-thirds of the septum 
and the apex will be affected because those are the areas that, that the areas that are surprised by the left coronary. So left anterior coronary artery. Right coronary anterior uh, coronary artery occlusion is 30 to 40%. It's the second common site. So in fact, you know, the posterior of the left ventricle, right ventricle, and the etc. Et These are the things that you guys can read. And those are the sites that are affected. If they are affected, it means that those are the ones that are uh what's this? Th those are the areas or rather the parts of the heart that will be affected because of an occlusion to it, due to an atherosclerosis in those areas. What is the what is the pathogenesis? Coronary ischemia, meaning there's ischemia to the heart caused by an atherosclerosis or an atheromatous plaque. We've already talked about that's why by now you know what I mean. Occlusion due to a thrombosis or spasm that will lead to reduced oxygenation to the myocardium. If there's no oxygen, there will be increased lactic acid production. Of which there, or in short, when there is reduced oxygenation, there's reduced ATP formation. Because there's reduced ATP formation, where do you think is the heart going to get the energy from for it to contract in one minute? It will not contract. And hence, that will lead to lactic acid building up. Because there is no oxygen again going there, the tissue will die in necrosis. When the macadam dies, it will release the enzymes which are called CK. CK is uh, creatinine kinase. Creatinine kinase, lactic acid dehydrogenase. I don't, if, if I if I was this, I don't know if you have light for that one. L D H. So L D H is uh, yeah, it's lactate dehydrogenase. So I'm going to have. Uh, Elevated creatinine kinase phosphate, uh, LDH, which is lactic, lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, and also the Mercator protein, which is called troponin I. So troponin I, LDH, and CK are elevated, they are released in necrosis when the myocardium is dying. That's why these are the things that you find elevated on your when you when you do your blood, your, when you order for your laboratory test, you find that this elevated. If you go back to the question again, there was that point that mentioned this. So because of the necrosis, there is an increased risk of creatinine phosphate, lactic dehydrogenase, and myocardial protein, which is called in brackets troponin, troponin I. Ischemia for 20 to 30, 40 minutes is irreversible, meaning you cannot reverse it. Or during three to six hours, intervention can prevent the extension of infection. So meaning during this same uh, whatever, you can prevent the extension of an infection. So the patterns, what are the patterns of uh, the same myocardial infection? We've got the subendocardio, meaning it's the endocardium that is affected. Transmural, meaning all the layers of the heart have been affected. So occluded by, caused mainly by occlusion for the transmural. But for this one, you are going to have stenosis, but not occluded, caused by effort occurs during the night. This is the subendocardium. Microscopy, small areas that are just affected by transmural is bad because remember there's an occlusion of an, a blood vessel complicated or completed. Morphology. So we are going to have a grossy, dark moted pale, whatever. I don't know if it's necessary, but remember this is what is happening in the heart, and that is the pathophysiology there. What are the complications of the same ischemic heart disease? They are they are summarized by the mnemonic, which is called CHAMP. Or rather, we can say CHAM. Yeah, CHAM. Remember, if you've given someone CHAMs, but there is no R, that R is replaced by A here. So number one, you can have congestive heart failure. You can have hemopericardia. So, for example, because there is reduced blood supply to the myocardium, the papillary muscles can rupture. They can detach because there's nothing that is going to them. There's necrosis, so they will just rupture. Because they will rupture, that will lead to a buildup of blood in the pericardial cavity, which is called the hemopericardium. Because of a hemopericardium, there is cardiac tampon. There is increased accumulation of blood, or rather any fluid, in the pericardial cavity, that will lead to what? It will, it will, it will start. Remember what I told you that the myocardium does not I mean the the heart is covered within the pericardium, or which the pericardium is like this. Then the heart is inside. Then you are going to have maybe okay. Let me just assume this is my pericardial cavity because there's fluid that is I mean they are in the pericardial cavity. There's fluid that is accumulating in here. A lot of fluid due to a rupture, the rupture muscle in there. The fluid uh, uh, admits there because the fluid has accumulated there. It will start compressing on the heart, and hence the heart. They had to find it very difficult to contract and pump blood out of it. It will be failing in short, it will to start failing, and that is called congestive heart failure, acute heart failure. So that is what is also complicating leading to heart failure. But hemopericardium is mainly due to the rupture, the papillary mass. And they'll ask you about complications of the coronary uh what's this of the ischemic heart disease. Number one is congenital heart disease, second is 
oh, not congenital but congestive heart failure. Number two is hemopericardium. Number three is aneurysm. Because the heart, this is straightforward. Because the heart, the heart, there is a, a reduced blood supply to the myocardium, remember. So it will become weak and hence it will dilate. The heart is going to dilate as if it's a blood vessel. So you're going to have aneurysm of the heart, the ventricles, ventricular aneurysm due to fibrosis and thrombosis. Because, they, because they, there is no blood going there, it will become weak and it will dilate. That is aneurysm. So aneurysm dilatation of the blood vessel, which will, which will, which will predispose thrombosis and embolism, or which is due to the thrombosis and embolism or whatever. Arrhythmias is abnormal conduction of the heart. Imagine if the right artery, right coronary artery is obstructed. It means that the SA node is not going to be supplied. And hence, you're going to have abnormal conduction of electricity, which is called um, arrhythmia. Myocardial rupture, the heart can last rupture. It can rupture, the papillary muscle can rupture, or the ventricular septum can rupture because of ischemia during the seven days of whatever. So these are the complications. Charm. Congestive heart failure, hemopericardia, aneurysm, arrhythmia, or uh, myocardial rupture. That is the last M. Myocardial rupture. So here you should change its M, not charm. It's A. Charm, you should put, you should remove P, then put whatever. Maybe there's another P, but I, I don't see it. I've never seen it. But yeah, that's it. Those are the risk factors for that. So let's go back to the question. Those are the complications. Let's go the, back to the question and answer it properly. This was the case scenario. So it says what, of which the age, remember we said greater than 45, so it's a risk factor. Diabetic, remember we said hyperglycemia is a risk factor and a modifiable for ages with a history of hypertension. Hypertension is also a risk factor. Presented with severe retrospinal pain. By the way, you haven't talked about the clinical features of uh, myocardial infarction, but uh, mainly with chest pain and that chest pain, that pain reduced where it reduces to the back. It can reduce to the, the back of uh, the tip of the scalp. Not the, sorry, not the scalp. Sorry, guys, I'm right. That, uh, it can reduce to the back of the uh, scapula, or it can reduce to the mandible, or that pain can be just within the chest, or it reduce into the uh, epigastric region. Mainly, that is the, compl the, compl the complaint that the patient will come with to the hospital. Well, the most significant uh, clinical presentation or that, that that will bring the patient to the hospital is really, really chest pain, or also called angina. So now that angina that we are saying, it's divided into step, uh, you have got stable, imagine, remember stable angina as well as uh, prismental and unstable. Know how they present. Know how they present. Typically, the retrosternal pain is the most significant one, right? Yeah, so for well, that is for angina. No chest or oh, tenderness, and that pain. Remember, what they said it can radiate to whatever, and this pain sometimes can be can be absent, especially in in what in diabetic patients. Remember, in diabetic patients, there is deposition of those lipids, and one of the complications of that of the diabetes is uh, nephropathy, neuropathy, retinopathy. So the neuropathy, the neurons are damaged. If the neurons are damaged, it means that they cannot transport those impulses to the uh, the brain and you can't feel that they can't feel that pain, the chest pain, because of that. That is why it is not always that they'll present with myocardia. They the what's this? They will always present with um angina, no. But know that it's the most common thing that will bring them to the hospital. They know that angina sometimes can occur at resting. Mostly that one is unstable angina. So while wow, the other angina can occur at any time, maybe you are sleeping at 20, 21 hours. Which is Prince Mento, and it can occur, can be occurring at the same time tomorrow, at the same time. Yeah. And then for, for stable, this one occurs at on exertion. If you want to do something, that's when the pain starts. And it will be it will be relieved when you stop. So similar efforts, similar, similar efforts, or yeah, efforts to bring about similar symptoms or similar pain. The more you increase the, the, the workload, for example, you want to run, you want to, to run further than you uh, than you ran uh, yesterday, you you increase the pain short. That is what I'm trying to say there. Know that this was the pain that this patient was presented with what the pain was, which was behind the sternum, which was dating to the left, to the left shoulder. After you do the laboratory investigation, you showed the elevated serum troponin and creatinine phosphokinase. If you remember CP, creatinine phosphokinase is the enzyme that I talked about. So creatinine phosphokinase is elevated 
anthropogenic elevated these ones they, they will help you to to determine what is happening there is it just angina or maybe it's ischemic heart disease in this case it's ischemic heart disease and the ischemic heart disease that is occurring there or the disease that is in them it's myocardial infarction that is a diagnosis so my, what is your diagnosis myocardial infarction mention the risk factors for this disease you've got modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors of which we'll mention them you guys describe the microscopic picture of this disease it's atherosclerosis and you, you have to describe it how is it occurring how is it reaching to the atheromatous plaque i've already explained that it's atherosclerosis just on question number three question number four enumerate the possible complications charm charm a c for congestive heart failure the other h it's for hemopericardium blood in there a is for arrhythmias the other a is for what's this what is the what is the what's this the other a standing for the other a is, uh, is helping us with um so these are the a's i'm, I'm talking about aneurysm arrhythmias and myocardial rupture that is m the last m charm is the mnemonic for that question so those were the the, what's the, the complications Well, let me just go to another question that presents with the same things so that we do hypertension and heart failure. So this is another, another case. So a smoker, that is a risk fact. Diabetic atherosclerotic ottoman suffers from repeated attacks of severe chest pain. On examination, his blood pressure is 180 to 100. That is hypertension, guys. That is hypertension. Enumerate the risk factors for atherosclerosis, which are mentioned in this case. So in this case, for atherosclerosis, number one is the old age. Remember, the risk factors are divided into what? Into modifiable and non-modifiable. So in non-modifiable, number one is a man. In non-modifiable, we can't, we can't modify that. We, we don't have anything apart from that. Okay, he's a man, yes, and the age also. Because he's old and then he's a man. Those are the three risk factors, two risk factors for non-modifiable. And then the modifiable ones you've got, high BP, is smoking, every smoker, and is diabetic. Those are the risk factors that I've mentioned in there. And you might other risk factors for atherosclerosis, of which we've already mentioned them. You've got non modifiable ones and modifiable ones. Describe the pathological features of atherosclerosis. We already talked about this, how they are forming the fat streaks, tranathromatous plaque. List the complications of atherosclerosis, of which we've already talked about. The complications of atherosclerosis, we talked about it. If it, if it occludes the, the small arteries, it can lead to us. It can lead to uh cerebral infarction, myocardial infarction, if it's the lower limb, you can have a uh, gangrene and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Those were those were the things that we talked about. That is why I told you that we need to do atherosclerosis before we do the the other things. Okay, let's proceed. Another case. If it's uh 63 years old male came to the hospital complaining of sudden attack of tight tightness in discomfort sensation is on his chest, associated with pain on his left shoulder, is still myocardial infarction. He had the history of hypertension, that is a risk factor. His age is a risk factor, which was controlled by medication. ECG investigation revealed abnormal cardiac rhythm. So it's well, that is a risk factor, cardiac arrhythmias. Power complete blood count reviewed, that HB is low, it's too low, that is anemic. In platelet count of 160,000, which is okay, lipid profile analysis, they viewed high cholesterol, that is a risk factor, and high LDL, which is a risk factor as well, with low high density lipoprotein molecule. What is your provision diagnosis? This is myocardial infarction. This is myocardial infarction. And you might read predisposing factors present in this patient. So the, the predisposing factors, we already mentioned them. And then, I think we are done for this part. We are done. Yes, we are done. We are done, 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 done. So we also have another case. A middle-aged man had several episodes of chest pain during the last few years, which were diagnosed as stable angina. He was admitted to the hospital following a very severe attack, which ended in shock. Hey, what is the most probable diagnosis? Question number four. It's acute myocardial infarction. What is the most common underlying pathogenesis or cause of the disease? If atheromatous plaque remembers what you mentioned, there is complicated atheroma of coronary artery. 
uh, describe the gross and microscopic appearance of, of the affected part of the heart 24 hours after the onset of the chest. So we've already talked about that. These three complications of this case, myocardial rupture, myocardial aneurysm, heart failure, chance, chance, eh? That's what we discussed. I'm just trying to take you through the scenario question so that you know that this one is common, very common. Let's look at the other question. Question eight. A 50 year old man experiences episodes of severe substantial chest pain every time he performs any task requiring moderate exercise. This is step one, Jain. The, these episodes have become more frequent and severe in the past year, but they can be relieved by using use of subringo nitroglycerin. This is it. What is your most probable diagnosis? This is angina pectoris. Specifically, it is, it is table. What is the most common cause of that? It's coronary atherosclerosis. Always oh, remember that it's coronary atherosclerosis. Mention three other perspective factors other than exercise. The things that are leading to that. You can have also emotional excitement, heavy news, cold. Remember, those are the things that precipitate the stable angina. Whenever you just feel up, emotional excitement. Take a heavy meals or cold, you feel cold, it feels it, it, it or it when this when the weather is cold, or whatever that is a precipitating factor. And you might have complications of these regions you can have myocardial infarction, heart failure, you can have also myocardial rupture, and etc. etc. So remember that's what I wanted you guys to know. But there's also another question that I want to show you about the same topic, similar topic. An episode of chest pain lasting several hours during brings a 51 year old man is a man he's always a man so that's a rich fact he's found of an elevated serum creatinine kinase and serum creatinine mb and the angiogram reduced complete blockage of the left ventricle circumference artery one centimeter from its origin what is the most likely diagnosis number 14 is myocardial the infection mentioned the, risk, the possible risk factors you've already talked about them and you might the complications of such a, such a case you've seen that the questions are just the same so in short we're done which can get this and will never go back to it. Yes, we'll never go back to it. So let's go to the other cases, maybe hypertension, so or as well as cardiac failure. Thank you. Let me save this first. The meeting.